And then there was Silky Sullivan. In this six and a half furlong race at Santa Anita in early 1958, a new term was added to the language, a Silky Sullivan finish. Silky ran his races upside down, taking himself back at the start, in this case, as much as 41 lengths behind the leaders, then making a tremendous stretch run. Behind the outside, Renata, Sully's boy, and Silky Sullivan is moving up. Turning for home is Music Land Fox in front by one length, then Hook of M. The second by Hans and one half. Renata still to have fun. Sully's boy in the fourth one. And um, fire alarm. Silky Sullivan on the outside. Silky Sullivan is now fourth. Silky Sullivan is third. Here comes Silky Sullivan on the outside. Unfortunately, Silky was not a champion. He was an artist's conception of how a thoroughbred should look, a handsome, muscular, bright-as-a-penny magazine illustration. His girth demanded a custom surcingle. At a bit over 16 hands, he weighed but 1,000 pounds early in his career, but consumed 12 to 15 quarts of oats every day and ballooned to 1,200 pounds before the Kentucky Derby. After winning the Santa Anita Derby in a modified version of his come-from-behind sprint, he became the choice of the common man, his name a household word. Trainer Reggie Cornell decked him out in red and green, and with a young Bill Shoemaker perched on his back, he was something to see. His training at Louisville did not go well, and early spectators at Churchill Downs on the first Saturday in May saw an unusual sight. There was Silky Sullivan breezing through the stretch on the morning of the big race. Going to the paddock on Derby Day, Silky captured the imagination and suggested the impossible dream for millions of innocents. Hard-headed professionals knew that Calumet had a colt named Tim Tam in the race. In the 1958 Derby, Silky did only the first part of his act. He lagged behind early. An off track, the humid weather, whatever the reason, he never produced his patented charge. While on the front end, Tim Tam overcame Lincoln Road for another Calumet success. After an equally disappointing Preakness, Silky Sullivan returned to California. He never regained his early three-year-old form. His size made training and soundness a problem, and he was retired to stud, producing a few sturdy runners, but nothing with his style. So much a part of folklore had he become that many years after retirement, he made guest appearances at Santa Anita, usually on St. Patrick's Day or Derby Day, and seemed as happy to be back as were the appreciative patrons. Indeed, at 20, he seemed remarkably fit and full of himself as he once again pranced on the course where he'd made his reputation. And these many years after 1958, there has never been a thoroughbred like Silky Sullivan, and there has never been a race like this.